This is the second screencast about Dask. We will be covering arrays, Dask arrays. The notebook in the Dask tutorial folder is 03 underscore array. The most useful Dask feature for scientific computing is Dask arrays. Basically, it's this, they have the same behavior of NumPy arrays, but they automatically parallelize and they support having processing arrays that are larger than memory. So um, basically streaming through your array and doing the computation on uh, subsets of the array that fit in memory and then accumulate all the computation to the end. And this is achieved by using blocked algorithms, which is a standard um, computing technique where you have some data in any dimension. So let's take, for example, two dimensions. So you see here a large matrix. matrix. Um, and um, what you can do is you can get um, blocks of that. So let's assume, for example, that you want to run the sum of this. Okay. Historically, NumPy would take uh, this as a, one single chunk of memory and then go, go through all the elements and do the sum. Okay. With Dask, instead, you get a subset of this, for example, five by eight elements, and then do the sum on that. And then another process in the meantime is doing the sum on another chunk. And so that many, many chunks can run in parallel. So if you imagine uh, running on expanse, that's uh, 128. So it's a big speed up is if um, you have all 128 cores running at the same time. OK, so uh, let's um, start by um, creating, as usual, our client. So what uh, we want to do here is we want to use threads instead of processes. So most of the time when you're doing scientific computing, uh, you remember that processes do not share memory. So if you have large chunks of memory uh, that um, need to be processed and you're using uh, different processes, those arrays need to be copied on the other processes. So this is going to be very inefficient. So as much as you can, you want to use um, threads. So you do process equal false so that um, distributed scheduler is going to use threads. Okay. So now we are going to load a data set from disk. And uh, H5Pi, very similarly to Dask, is lazy. So one, when you um, create an object, access a data set, you are not actually reading the data from disk yet. It's when you actually are accessing them that uh, is uh, doing the reading. OK, uh, in this notebook here is showing how you could even implement a blocked algorithm yourself. OK, you are just uh, you can uh, run and do the computation on the first million element, on the second million element and the third million element until you have exhausted all of your array. OK, but this is not in parallel, of course. OK. And the Dask Array can automate all of this. Um, and so you see the first thing you do when you create an array is you define the size of the chunks. In this case, it's a one-dimensional array, so chunks is only one element. If it's a matrix, instead, you're going to have uh, one element for the x direction and one element for the y direction. And here is very convenient. It's giving you all the statistics. So here the chunks are 3.8 megabytes, OK? And uh, they are 1,000 uh, chunks. And uh, there are also some heuristics into, in Dask to automatically choose a chunk size, if you're not sure uh, what you want to choose. Um, but generally, 
um, so you want to balance between um, having not you don't want to have too many chunks because otherwise you're losing time going through chunks and um, you don't want to have too little chunks because you cannot use the full computational power of your machine efficiently. So let's say if you have, for example, on, on uh, expanse, if you only add uh, 64 chunks, then only 64 cores can be used of the machine. So at least you want to have 128 chunks. But it's often useful to have more. And you want to keep the chunk size uh, in the, between a few megabytes and 100 megabytes uh, maximum. Okay, and so once when you run a computation, it's actually lazy as usual. So um, you need to run compute to actually do the computation. So you see here that's taking some time and it's uh, going through the array 128 chunks at a time of all the different threads or um, so let's take a look here on the setup of our cluster okay so we have four workers so let's say how the workers are configured so you see the worker each worker has 32 uh, threads okay very good. So uh, let's uh, proceed. OK, so you could do, if you want, you could compute the mean. So you see that the interface of Dask Array, it's very similar to NumPy. So for example, the sum method here is the same that you have in NumPy. And you just have to remember to add compute at the end so that you're actually triggering uh, computing. OK. So um, it's even more efficient when you are creating data on the fly. For example, let's say that you have some um, Gaussian uh, distributed elements. OK, so you can create them with the Dask equivalent of np.random.normal. And um, you see, you have both to pass the size and the, the size, the total size, and the size of his, each each chunk, and then um, you, in at this, this is very useful because um, doing something like this, you can also work with data that are larger than memory because you, the chunk of data are created on the fly. They are processed. So for example, here we want to do the mean. So uh, we, we can compress a whole chunk in one number, and then we can go and process the next chunk. So in memory, we only need to keep a subset of the number of chunks of the total chunks. We can create them, process them, and then free up the memory, and then other chunks can be created and processed. OK. So um, next, let's try with another example. This is on, on uh, some uh, weather data. And also here, we have h5py files. So the data are stored on disk this time. And they are accessed when we uh, slice our uh, data set. OK, so we can uh, show a small slice of our data set. And uh, what we want to do is we want to turn this data set in a Dask arrays. So you see here that it's a lot of arrays, OK? Because each um, of the data sets in our list of data sets is turned into a Dask array object. So it's not very efficient to process all of those different arrays. So what we can do is we can stack them together and join them into large arrays. This is very nice. 
So this is a three-dimensional data set and our chunk size is this one. So you see we have um, different um, length in each direction. And uh, um, you, you can stop the video here if you wanna uh, try to do those, the next exercises. And then I'm going to um, show the examples. So here you see, this is the exact same syntax of um, NumPy, but so the nice thing about Dask is that under the hood is automati uh, automatizing all of the handling of um, processing all the different chunks, creating them if they need to be created, the reading the, the uh, data from file if it's needed, and then making sure that it's not going out of memory. All of that is handled automatically. And this is also, this is even more powerful when we are running fully distributed across multiple nodes, as we will do uh, later. Okay, the final example, if uh, you want to take a look at it uh, later, uh, it's a, a potential. So here we are, we have a cluster of atoms with some coordinates. We compute the distances uh, between all of them, and then we want to compute this potential between them to compute the energy. And uh, um, you can see that we first have a full uh, NumPy implementation. And then what we can do is we can um, turn that into a parallel version, basically by replacing the calls to the NumPy function with the Dask equivalent. So you see here, um, energy we are calling uh, NANSUM. Okay, so this is the equivalent of SUM, but handles well when there are um, di division by zero. Okay, and um, one, so this is the potential calculation function. And then we, uh, we, you see here, we compute the size of the chunk by taking uh, into consideration the number of CPUs. So this is a very good way of doing this so that we are, Make, we, we make sure that we are uh, spreading the work on all of our uh, CPUs. And then once we have this Dask object, we can call the, co the um, potential Dask function and on the output, uh, we can call compute. Okay, there is still something missing in the, uh, so you wanna first, before implementing something uh, in Dask, before transitioning from NumPy to Dask, you wanna make sure that uh, what you need is uh, implemented. So you can look uh, more details here and also make sure you check the website that has uh, really excellent documentation, excellent documentation.